Why do people fear liberation from their programs, and why is this fear imaginary? Well, because creatively speaking, you can imagine it doesn't exist, but who knows what they're experiencing is fear? Who knows what they're experiencing as fear that they themselves are creating and protecting themselves or hiding behind as a rule? That's why it's important to inspect this thing we call the self. The mask. Well, it's not only as simple as putting on and taking off a mask. No, it's what you yourself want others to believe sometimes, which then is it makes it a psychic condition. So, it could be a good psychic condition, especially if you've had a really bad self-image. You know, you can put on a different face, perhaps. So, but practice goes beyond the face. Um, and postures and self-glorification programs. See, the look at me, aren't I great? Sort of, let's say, um, programs, mechanisms that you expect children to be working through themselves as they develop a sense of who they are as they're going through school. So, mm -hmm. They don't know exactly who they are. They are whatever you think they are. Sometimes they're waiting for somebody to tell them who they are. Who do you think I am? Who am I? What do I do? What, how am I supposed to act? And so on. So the fear is something to recognize is a contraction that is created. A reaction. It's a reaction. And it's generally a reaction uh, of fear, tightening up. Okay. And that means not knowing, not understanding, not being open enough to know. So when you, you're confronted with your ignorance, that's fear and that's also tightening up and ignorance at the same time. Okay. So people have to be educated beyond their assumed education or cultural education to understand that when we get into the spiritual levels, firstly, there is nothing to fear but you, your fear. See? And then what you need to do is are open to the universe, and I don't mean a hostile environment. Right? That's fear producing. See? But if you can find a comfortable place where you're not intimidated, where you're not being pummeled by uh, words and other people's emotions and so on, but where you can feel your, your peace, your nature, as peace. Then in doing that, maybe you can relax and open to isness. It's possible. You can open to what they call the pure beingness, just beingness, breathing without reaction, calm breathing, healing, most importantly. See. So when people are confused, they often, you know, frightened, fearful, concerned, reactive, neurotic, easily disturbed, right? protecting themselves, defending themselves, insecure, the gamut is lengthy. All the neuroses, all the psychoneurotic tendencies and programs that are typical human beings who had a uh, questionable upbringing without spiritual, let's say, um, peace without the conversation of being okay to begin with. Mm -hmm. And that's the beginning point. <sighs> and so when you, you come around certain teachers, gurus, or whatever you want to call them, guides, you know, uh, what you need to be afraid of is the intense peace. <laughs> uh, strong. Yeah. And people who are not used to it say, what's going on here? Oh, why, is it, why, is it, why is it so quiet here? Yeah. Why isn't anybody talking here? Yeah. <laughs> so we have to recognize that as human beings, neurotic or otherwise, we go to sleep every night into very profound sleep if we're allowed to. 
sleep, deep sleep, where there's absolutely nada, zero, pure comfort, pure absence, pure out of body, out of mind, out of self, out of thought, say, out of world consciousness. Say. It's beautiful. Say. We're all designed that way. So you have to know yourself as, as including profound peace and deep consciousness or no consciousness. 